President Biden has committed an outrage, a slap in the face to believers across America and the world. It's time for The Line of Fire with your host, biblical scholar and cultural commentator, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity. Call 866-34-TRUTH to get on The Line of Fire. And now, here's your host, Dr. Michael Brown. You are about... To hear a trumpet blast, you are about to hear a wake-up call. You're about to hear me shouting, oh, not shouting on the air in terms of raising my voice, but shouting from my heart, another warning to our nation and another call to the church to arise and shine. Michael Brown, thanks for joining us on today's broadcast. Truly, it's my goal, it's my prayer, it's my burden that we will serve you as your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity, that, that we will infuse you with faith and truth and courage, that we will help you stand strong on the front lines. Nothing would bring me greater joy than to know that we've helped you stand for what's right. We've helped you be bold in the Lord. We've encouraged you not to be ashamed of the truth, not to be ashamed of the gospel, not to be ashamed of what is right. If you'd like to enter into the discussion today, if you think I'm being unfair, if you think I'm wrongheaded or on the wrong side of the issue, or if you want to weigh in with your own concerns, 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. I'm not taking just general Bible questions today, not doing that, but talking about moral and cultural issues here in America. You may be listening, watching in another country. If you are and you want to weigh in because this is relevant to you as well, please do. Uh, tomorrow, I'm, I plan to address a uh, video Mike Winger, Pastor Mike Winger, has put out four hours about Pastor Benny Hinn, uh, calling him out very, very strongly. I want to give some response to that. Uh, God willing, on tomorrow's broadcast, unless something changes dramatically, that's where we'll be going. I want to talk about what the Bible does say about provision, what the Bible does say about God meeting our needs, and what is carnal, what is manipulative, what is destructive, what is wrong. want to talk about all those things with you. As always, we'll do our best to be as constructive as possible and wanting to glorify Jesus. Okay, let me start here today. If you yourself identify as transgender or non-binary, if you yourself have struggled with gender identity issues or struggling right now, if you are intersex or with a biological or chromosomal abnormality, but feel now kind of covered in the larger LGBTQI plus spectrum, I want to say this to each one of you. I'm not mad at you. You're not my enemy. I don't think you are a lesser human being because of these struggles or because of your identity, you, just like me, are created in the image of God. Jesus died for your sins, just like he died for my sins, because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in a million different ways. And God's desire is to see you find wholeness and new life in him, the same as his desire for every person on the planet who does not know him. So when I speak about these issues today, I'm not attacking you personally. You may feel attacked personally. I want to start by reaching out first and saying that's not my heart. That's not my intent. I've interacted over the years with trans-identified Christians and non-Christians. And I've spent wonderful time with folks who would identify as ex-trans. They are now, they found new identity in the Lord They found wholeness in the body in which they were created, and they no longer identify as trans, and they are free from those desires and from that confusion. That's my desire for each of you. The greatest thing that we could see happen to you is that you'd be at home within your own body, that you didn't have to be on hormones, that you didn't have to have some type of sex change surgery, that you didn't have to push against what your genes are saying and what your DNA is saying. That would be the greatest thing, and that's my desire to see you hold in that way. At the same time, I absolutely oppose transgender activism. I absolutely oppose 
the, the pushing of a trans agenda that supports children, quote, transitioning. So we're talking about chemically castrating an 11-year-old boy that he'll take hormones to stop the onset of puberty or hormone blockers. And in doing so, could well sterilize himself for life and create all kinds of other problems, bone development, other things like that for life because he's, he's struggling with his gender identity. Or for a 13-year-old girl to have a mastectomy because she's convinced that she's really a boy. And some of it is just social media deception and TikTok nonsense and other stuff and, and just going through her own changes and being not at home in her own body. And she thinks that's the solution. I will aggressively stand against those things and call them out as child abuse and say that those that are advocating for it are on the wrong side. The reason that I bring these th things up today is because of the outrage of what happened over this weekend. So if you're listening, watching live, this is right after Easter weekend. Now, the fact that Easter is separated from Passover and why that happened, that's a whole separate subject. And I'll, I may get into that later in the broadcast, okay? I may get into that later in the broadcast. But this is the time that hundreds of millions of Christians around the world consider this to be the most sacred time of the year. On Good Friday, remembering the death of Jesus. And on Sunday, what's called Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, celebrating his resurrection. It's a day of highest church attendance uh, in the year where people who are nominal Christians will show up. In fact, I remember seeing a little cartoon one time, just a little written newspaper cartoon, a Christian newspaper or something. And there was a, there was a guy and he's, he's greeting the pastor, you know, the pastor standing outside the building as everyone's leaving after the sermon, shaking their hands, right? He's shaking everybody's hands. And, and uh, you know, it says, he is risen. There it is on the marquee. You know, it's obviously Easter Sunday. And, and the, the husband is with his wife, right? And he's pointing the finger at the pastor with a smile. He goes, you're slipping, Reverend. Every time I come here, you preach the same message, meaning the guy shows up once a year. Uh, but it's a great time to win the lost, and it's a great time to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So what does the White House do? What does President Biden do? Remember, he's Catholic, all right? Obviously, he's not rightly living out his faith in many ways, but he's Catholic. What does he do? On Friday, on Good Friday, he proclaims and announces that this is Sunday will be transgender day of visibility. What an outrage. What an absolute outrage. I said at the beginning of the show, this was a slap in the face. When I wrote about it, you can read the article on our website, thelineoffire.org, thelineoffire.org. America is in moral freefall. In fact, uh, are you getting my weekly emails where we let you know about the latest articles we've written? Are you getting those? Are, are, you, are you getting... Our, our monthly frontline newsletter to, to equip you and empower you and strengthen you. You'll be so edified by it. If not, then you may not even know this article was written and you'll never even get a note about it. So take a moment, unless you're driving, take a moment and go to thelineoffire.org, thelineoffire.org. When you go there, right on the homepage, just click subscribe. We'll send you the frontline newsletter once a month. And then once a week, We'll say, here the latest article. So you'll, you'll get a note later in the week. Hey, I wrote about America's in moral freefall. I, I, we talked about these things. Here are links. And so you'll be fully equipped. That, this is our job. That's our calling. That's what God wakes me up in, at night to do, to, to equip you, to strengthen you. So we want to pour these resources into you. So over the weekend, outrage, because President Biden chooses Friday, good Friday, chooses good Friday to make this announcement that Sunday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday will be Transgender Day of Visibility. As I said in my article, it's not a slap in the face. It, it's a kick below the belt with a smile and a laugh. Hey, we're just going to post something for those watching. Look at these two tweets or posts on, on X basically side by side from the president, okay? I mean, there's basically one after the other. Wishing everyone uh, a happy Easter, resurrection, Easter Sunday and all that. You know, just celebrating that. That's, that's the one. So we've got them, if you're watching, side by side. You say, how can I watch? Well, the line of fire, 
website, excuse me, the line of the line of fire YouTube page or Dr. Michael Brown's Facebook page. We do a live stream every day. All right. Well, waving at folks right now as I'm speaking. So there, there it is. This, uh, don't tell me there's no consciousness from the White House. Don't tell me that President Biden is not aware that he's making the announcement on Good Friday. Don't tell me he's not aware that it's going to be Resurrection Easter Sunday. Of course, he's 100 percent aware. And fine, these these I don't think he sat down and, and posted this like President Trump was tweeting on his own. This is obviously from his office from the White House. But everybody, everybody knows exactly what was going on. So look at it side by side. Happy Easter and it's Transgender Day of Dis- Visibility. Wow. Wow. You say, well, what's so bad about Transgender Day of Visibility? Oh, okay. Let's, let's separate things here. Timing, 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 timing. Let's put the day aside entirely. And I'm going to read the proclamation in a moment. Let's put the day aside completely. Let's, let's even ignore Transgender Day of Visibility, whether it's bad or good, okay? The fact is, you don't announce it on Good Friday, and, and especially when it's timed, so it's March 31st, that's how it's been set up every year, when it's timed to be the same as Easter Sunday. We want everyone to know, special proclamation, we want everyone to know that this Sunday is Transgender Day of Visibility. You say, okay, why is it so offensive? Maybe you're, on, you're trans yourself, what's the big deal? The big deal is that this is deeply offensive to hundreds of millions of Christians worldwide, that this is deeply offensive. This is the ongoing extension of gay activism. It is the inevitable slippery slope, which now puts us in moral freefall. And to illustrate the point, uh, Baptist leader William Wolf, uh, he, con- he, he posted this on X. He posted this. And if we have the, the post, you can, you can put the link up. He contrasted the presidential announcement, which was made on Good Friday, with Good Friday 1956. 1956, Good Friday. Three crosses on the New York City skyline. Good Friday 2024. The White House celebrates Transgender Day of Visibility. Now, that's not a slippery slope, friends. We are in moral free fall We'll be right back. This is Michael Ellison, founder of Trivita Wellness. I want to introduce our Trivita Alfred Libby original patented sublingual B12, B6, and folate formula. I had the wonderful opportunity of meeting Alfred Libby, a pioneer in vitamin research. I also had the opportunity to obtain the patented formula, and the rest is history, with over 50 million tablets being taken by our Trivita members through the years. The amazing testimonies of mental clarity mood enhancement, and more energy have been thrilling to me as a founder of Trivita Wellness. Not only is it an amazing B12 product, but it is loaded with the essential B6 vitamin. I call it the workhorse vitamin. It is vital for strong immune function and every body system. Here's what the National Center for Biotechnology Information says, and I quote, it plays a key role and is crucial to immune function. It is a molecule necessary for the proper functioning of the entire body system and its role cannot be overestimated. Harvard Medical School of Health says folate is the natural form of vitamin B9 and it plays a key role in breaking down homocysteine, an amino acid that can exert harmful effects on the body when it is present in high amounts. I encourage you today to try the Trivita Libby B12, B6, and folate formula. To order Alfred Libby's B12 for yourself, call 1-800-771-5584 or online at Trivita.com. Order today and use promo code BROWN25 to receive 25% off your order. As a new customer, 100% of your order proceeds from your first order will go to support the Line of Fire radio broadcast. 
1-800-771-5584 or online at trivita.com. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on the Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. That's it. That's the number to call. 866-348-7884. If you think I'm wrong, overreacting, give me a call. If you'd like to weigh in yourself with your own burden concerning what's happening in the country, that is the number, 866-34-TRUTH. Hey, look, friends. Uh, by God's grace, I plan on running my race as long as he gives me breath. As long as the, the Lord gives me breath, I want to run my race. I can't boast about tomorrow, but whatever's in my hands, whatever's in my control, I'm acting on. Uh, to eat the most healthy way I can, going on 10 years now, absolute lease on life God's given me. To exercise, to, to do what I can, to take proper care of this temple so I can run hard and run well. As uh, I'm now 69 and there's nothing that I want to do, say I could have done in my 20s or 30s that I, that I can't do now by God's grace because of his intervention in my life. And I want the competitive edge in that sense. So that's why Trivita, our co-sponsor, that's a regular part of my life as well, an important part. So check out their great supplements. And in doing so, you also make a generous donation to the line of fire at the same time. Call 800-771-5584. It's 800 Seven seven one fifty five eighty four, or go to trivita.com use the code brown 25 okay newt gingrich said this is president biden literally out of touch with reality why would he take christianity's holiest day easter and declare it to be transgender day of visibility we would be irritated whenever he did it, but doing it on Easter is an obscene insult to every Christian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and not only so, at the same time, the White House said with the, with the Easter egg art contest for the White House, uh, children of the National Guard are prohibited from submitting religious Easter egg designs for the 2024 Celebrating National Guard Families uh, Art event at the White House. The art contest is part of the White House uh, Easter traditions, which include the annual Easter egg roll. So forget how Easter eggs got tied in with the celebration of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Forget that. It's got nothing to do with the gospel, nothing to do with the Bible. Forget it, all right? But you can't, when the, for the art design, nothing that was, was overtly... Religious, religious theme. Colin, Rigg, uh, Colin Rugg said, not only has President Biden declared Easter Sunday 2024 as Transgender Day of Visibility, but he is banning religious-themed Easter egg designs at the Easter egg roll event. How Catholic of him. The art contest is a tradition at the White House Easter egg roll. However, the Catholic president doesn't want to, s want to see anything religious-themed. This is madness, friends. This is cultural madness. This is part of what we have been warning about. So William Wolfe's post on X contrasted Good Friday, 1956, with three crosses showing on the New York City skyline. Good Friday, 2024, the White House celebrates Transgender Day of Visibility. He said, America didn't become less religious. We just traded Christianity and the cross for the religion of LGBTQ. QIA plus and the rainbow flag. And in response to that, David Limbaugh reposted that and said, is it fair to say that we are now a full blown pagan society? Yeah. So there's the image you're, you're, you're looking at it. If you're watching of the, the, the New York city skyline with the three crosses, good Friday, 1956. Now contrast that with the white house proclamation of the Transgender Day of Visibility 2024. Yes, exchange one religion for another. He's absolutely right. Now look, this is nothing new. It's just now more overt, more extreme, more in your face, more blatant, and more of a time for a wake-up call for America, especially believers. Uh, I wrote an article, February 2020, and it was titled, As We Mindlessly Careen Our Way Down the Slippery Slope. 
my new article, which you can find on the line of fire.org. Just click on read. It says America is in moral freefall. But here's, here's what I wrote back in 2020. As we mindlessly careen our way down the slippery slope, it begins with these words. Is anyone surprised that HGTV recently featured its first thruple? In this case, a man and two women. But, but what else should we expect? This is not the inevitable direction of our society's slippery slide down. The, art, uh, uh, the, avan- the avalanche goes downward, not upward. So no surprise there at all. Uh, and then uh, Elliot Clark, writing on Gospel Coalition, December 2020. This is Elliot Clark. I cite this in my new article, America's Moral Freefall. He was talking about Francis Schaeffer's books and referring to one in particular that came out in 1970. Listen to what Schaefer said, and, and Elliot Clark summarizes. Yes, back in 1970, Schaefer says the United States, not just continental Europe, was already post-Christian. He writes about the reality of historic Christianity becoming the minority in the West, stripped of cultural power and influence. So he already said we were post-Christian back in 1970. And look at this warning he had. In this situation, Schaefer identifies a great danger for evangelicals, taking sides with political elites in order to retain comfort, affluence, and personal peace. In the face of societal chaos and upheaval, Schaefer doesn't want Christians to compromise for the sake of short-lived comfort. Ooh, that hit home, hits home to this moment. So the point is, uh, 54 years ago, And before Francis Schaeffer and others were saying America, Europe, are already post-Christian. What I'm saying is we're in moral freefall now. Yes, God's been moving. There are churches I work with on fire. The lost are being saved. Families are living right. Young people are being discipled. God is moving. And there have been positive things that happened, obviously in terms of equal rights in America from the 50s until today. Yes. And there is a pushback taking place even now against some of the cultural madness because it's crossed too many lines. And we've said for years the pushback is coming. It's here and it's rising. In that sense, the, the revolution is, is gaining steam. But please, let's not lose sight of the madness. See, you get so used to it. You get so bombarded with it. You get so overwhelmed with it. It becomes so normal. You forget how crazy it is. Please hear me. What's crazy is what the society is doing, what the White House is doing. I'm not saying if you struggle with gender identity, if you struggle with with where you fit in terms of your sexuality, I'm not saying you're crazy. I'm saying God wants you to find wholeness in the Lord without mutilating your body, without living on hormones for the rest of your life, without having to be something that you were not created to be, without trying to join together with someone that is contrary to God's will and plan for your life. He has something better. What's crazy, what I refer to as transanity, is, is what the society is doing. It is destructive. It is harmful. It is wrong. And it is, it's beyond time that we wake up. But if this doesn't do it, if this doesn't push another button, if this doesn't get us saying, what in the world happened to our country? I don't know what will get our attention. Uh, yeah, let me, let me just read to you the beginning of the proclamation. On Transgender Day of Visibility, we honor the extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans and reaffirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union where all people are created equal and treated equally throughout their lives. Yeah, that's the goal, friends. Not by catering to a falsehood, to a deception, to something emotionally mentally, psychologically, bodily, out of line in terms of our understanding and our thinking, but rather helping people find freedom and wholeness. And if a man wants to wear a dress, he's free to do so. But I also need to be free to say, if you want to teach in our nursery school, sir, and you're wearing a dress, you won't be welcome to. If you want to be the receptionist, in, in our dentist's office, sorry, you're not going to be able to. You say, is President Trump the answer? No, no. Mm-mm. Jesus is the answer. You may per- prefer Trump to Biden, but Jesus is the answer, not Trump. We'll be right back.
Hey friends, Michael Brown here. My delight to serve as your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity. We are living in such urgent times today, friends, that all of us are in the line of fire. There's a target on your back. There's a target on my back. If you simply seek to live by biblical values or just conservative moral values, you could be canceled. You could be cast out. You could be put down. You could be silenced. I'm here to say, friends, that I am not about to be silenced, and I don't believe you are either. It is time for us to stand up. It is time for us to say enough is enough. It is time for us to push back in Jesus' name, not fighting the way the world fights. No, overcoming evil with good, overcoming hatred with love, overcoming the flesh with the power of the Spirit, overcoming lies with truth. And that's what we're here to do on the Line of Fire broadcast. And friends, it's not just a broadcast. It is a movement of people around the world, God's people standing up saying enough is enough and saying, Lord, here we are. Send us, use us. I want to urge you today to join our support team because we are on the front lines together. And we are literally touching people around the world, in America, in the nations, in Israel. And together with your help, we're going to amplify this voice and spread this movement around the globe. So I encourage you, go right now to thelineoffire.org, thelineoffire.org. Click Donate Monthly Support, thelineoffire.org. Click Donate Monthly Support. When you do, you become a torchbearer. We immediately send you two great life-changing books. We immediately give you access to many classes I've taught. Others have to pay to take those. You get them for free exclusive video audio content, a new audio message every month, an insider prayer newsletter, 15% discount, our online bookstore, so much more. Join our support team today. Go to thelineoffire.org. Donate monthly support. This is how we rise up. It's The Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on The Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome back to the broadcast. Thanks for joining us. Friends, we're here to equip you, empower you, help you engage on the front lines. So going to the phones shortly, 866-348-7884. The Transgender Day of Visibility Statement, the White House website, says transgender Americans are part of the fabric of our nation. So by announcing this on Good Friday when it is now falling the day itself on Easter Sunday, okay? What it's saying is transgender Americans are part of the fabric of our nation. Committed Christians are not. Committed Christians are not. Now, this is the, this is the day now when church on Sunday, instead of focusing primarily on the, the resurrection of Jesus, well, maybe talk about that, but make sure you add in trans visibility. The... Here, here's what's positive about Transgender Day of Visibility. It reminds us that people need prayer. It reminds us that people need Jesus. It reminds us that many people are struggling. It reminds us that many people want to detransition, but they don't know a way out. It reminds us that God has a better way. It reminds us that he did not put a man in a woman's body or a woman in a man's body and that he wants to help people from the inside out. And if you have a trans neighbor or friend or loved one, all the more to call to pray for them and help them. I point everyone, I point everyone to the In His Image documentary. I had the honor of hosting that for the American Family Association, American Family Studios, In His Image. It's award-winning. You'll be blessed by it. The content is rich and beautiful and encouraging and edifying. It's a wake-up call, but it's filled not just with sound theology, but beautiful stories, and you'll meet some incredible ex-trans individuals. You say, how do I watch it? It's free. Go to inhisimage.movie, inhisimage.movie, or, or go to YouTube and just search for In His Image. It's about an hour and 40-something minutes long, so you'll know you have the right video there. Oh, one, one other little illustration here. Um, this got a lot of attention. Uh, this was March 30th. Mail runner C.C. Telfer displaced collegiate women in the finals of a women's invitational meet in Boston last month. Teller 
the first openly trans-identifying male to win a women's NCAA national title in the 400-meter hurdles 2019, ran unattached. No, it's just not part of a school or organization. And, and here's this male. Here's this male, whatever point of quote transitioning he's going on. Here's this male, it's like six foot two, next to these other women. He ends up bumping someone off track, getting disqualified. This is an outrage. This is an outrage. And for, you say, well, why keep talking about it? <laughs> I didn't bring this up. This was the last thing on my mind for the weekend and the last thing on my mind for today. I had a totally different show planned for today. I am not the one that proclaimed Transgender Day of Visibility. I'm not the one creating crises for kids in school where, where there are girls in school where they, they hold it in. Or they don't use the bathroom the entire day. Some won't drink anything during the entire day, so they don't have to use the bathroom. Why? Because there are boys who identify as girls who share the bathroom. Or they'll, they'll change in a closet, just try to find some closet where they can change in the locker room because they're boys who identify as girls in their locker rooms and getting undressed with them in colleges and other places. So that's why we're shouting. And, and kids are being mutilated and castrated chemically. That's why we're shouting. And, the, and ultimately, long term, this is destructive. Look, there are people, I'm aware, there are people who will say to me, Mike Brown, you have no idea what you're talking about. I had gender-confirming surgery or gender confirmation surgery, whatever the, the current term is used to describe it. I reject that term, by the way, but that's what's being used. And I feel so much better. Well, first I'd ask you, how long is it? According to Kelly Nugent, everyone knows this, Scott, Kelly Nugent came to prominence in the What is a Woman video that Matt Walsh did, uh, came to prominence before that for many others with a Newsweek article, she had worked for two years to get that out, saying, don't do what I did, don't make the mistakes I did, but by all means, by all means, don't transition children, don't transition children, don't transition children. Not as a Christian, as a secular person, okay? And I continue to interact with Kelly. In fact, pray for Kelly. I, I don't think she'd mind me saying that at all. Pray, pray for her, and I refer to her as Kelly, interact with her as Kelly, and she's not offended. And she said, look, I am, I am Kelly. I'm a woman, I'm a mother even though it goes by the name of Scott and looks like a man, can't reverse some of the things that you did. But, but, but here's the deal, friends. Here's the deal. The, the warning must be sounded loudly and clearly. And Kelly would say, within the first seven years, you might feel you did the right thing. The, the regret, the, the trauma starts to, for most, sets in later. And she said she knows hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who transitioned and has only made a couple that years and years later feel they did the right thing or really feel good about it. And you say, but I've seen studies. I've seen many studies and they indicate like 90% of the people, vast majority are happy they did what they did. From what I understand, most of those studies do not factor in those who've dropped out, those that have committed suicide, those that are, don't participate and even try to statistically figure out where that would fit. That's one. Two, many of them are done within a seven year period. According to Kelly, the, the stats would be very different. But even, even if, even if someone found peace of mind or felt better about themselves or felt more whole as a human being by, quote, transitioning, does that mean it was the best? There are people with the body identity integrity disorder, BIID. This is well documented. Look it up. Just search for BIID, body identity integrity disorder, sometimes just called body integrity disorder if, or body identity disorder. If, if, if you look this up, You'll, you'll find out, you'll find, go to a website which is sponsored by folks who struggle with this, and you'll read the stories about you know, one woman who blinded herself because all her life she felt she should have been blind. She's so happy she's blind. Or, or men that found ways to, to have their legs amputated, or even some who cut their limbs off themselves and tell you how much better they feel doing it. And there's peace of mind. And psychologists have said, we don't know how to help them. Their, their brain map, their mind map is saying they shouldn't have an arm here. They, they shouldn't have something from their shoulder down or they shouldn't be able to hear or, or see. Or, and, and when they do these things and mutilate themselves, they're not happy. Would we say that's the best course of action? No, well, why is this the best course of action then? Right? Well, why is it okay to, to do what you're going to do with a male private part to turn it into a female organ, et cetera, or do whatever you have mutilating surgery of some kind, why is that okay? But it's not okay to, mute, to, to amputate a leg, a healthy leg, if that makes someone feel better.
I'm saying there's still a better way. There's still a better way. All right, more to say, and I want to talk more about the state of America. First, we go to the phones with Charlie on Long Island. Hey, where on the island are you, Charlie? Hi, uh, Dr. Brown. So nice to talk to you. So uh, I'm actually in Nassau County. Okay, that's where I grew up. Oh, wow, that's, that's amazing. Uh, listen, I'm so, I'm so uh, extremely honored to talk to you. I've been honestly listening to you since I was like a little kid with uh, answering Jewish objections to Jesus. I'm 31 now. So this is, uh, I have a little bit of like <laughs> celebrity feel right now, but uh, I try not to. I know you're human just like I am. That's right. Exactly right, sir. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so um, interestingly enough, I actually grew up in a, in a household um, uh, my, my father was in the Worldwide Church of God. I'm sure you know that it's, sure. uh, Herbert, um, it was ran by Herbert W. Armstrong. So that's kind of my background. So I always kept like things like Sabbath and, and holy days and stuff like that. And uh, I'm, today I'm, I'm more of a, a charismatic, um, charismatic Sabbath keeper that does Passover and stuff like that. But I work very closely in online ministry with people that, you know, go to church on Sunday. I go to, I meet up with people on Sundays as well, mm-hmm. but I also keep the Sabbath. I, I keep Sunday as like a day of worship. Yeah, got it. All I, clear. I, I rest on Saturday. Yeah. So um, I, first of all, with the Joe Biden thing, I definitely think they were trying to slight uh, Christianity, even though I do keep Passover next month. So the, it, it's still a slight on yes, Christianity. Yes, exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. I look at, I personally look at um, the transgender issue the same way I look at anorexia. I don't think we would say, listen, don't eat, because it makes you feel better. Maybe that person is eventually going to die. But in this case, obviously, um, you're not going to necessarily die from transgenderism unless there's like a suicide, But um, which I do think that's very prevalent. Um, now, my question, my main question is with the course of decimin controversy, I noticed on Facebook you made a post about it. So I was kind of talking to some of my friends that, you know, they keep Easter and stuff like that. And I believe they're brothers. I don't believe we're saved by keeping Sabbath or Holy Days or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm past that, although that's a little bit of my background. I had that mindset. But um, essentially, uh, when it comes to that, you say that we shouldn't have necessarily separated, if I'm reading you correctly, we shouldn't have separated Easter from Passover. I know some say that Pascha mean it could mean Easter. That's why the King James Version mentions Easter, and I believe it's Acts 14, if I'm right. Um, so what do we do with this? Do you, do you, do you believe that uh, we should have just kept it doing like a Passover, but like made it like a Christian Passover, like maybe do a communion service on it, and then maybe do first fruits as the resurrection? Because we know it says Christ our first fruits was, was you know, raised for us. Well, what is your, what is your position on, on all of that? Yeah, so for those not familiar with the quarter decimal controversy, why it even ties in with this discussion, I said I, I'd get to this a little bit later in the broadcast, so, so we'll do it now. Um, Passover is in a few weeks, right? But yeah. Jesus, Yeshua, died and rose during the Passover season. So how did we end up with two separate holidays? How did that happen? Now, I, I'm just looking at a Facebook post where I posted this, and there's 738 comments to this post. It, in other words, it, it drew a lot of discussion. And no, I haven't, haven't read the, the comments. But um, I, I was not saying that the celebration of Easter was pagan. I never said that. Some made that assumption. So I'll probably post about that later. So number one, okay. I was not saying that it's pagan or that even the name Easter it goes back to Ishtar. No, not at all. That's not the case. Easter eggs and the bunny, forget that. It's nonsense. Wherever that comes from, it's got nothing to do with the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let's get rid of it. Okay, it's a fun custom. It's got nothing to do with the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let's focus on what matters. My point is that historically, you had two different customs in the ancient church as to when uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus were celebrated. One custom was to do it with during the Passover season, okay? So these were Christians who were not partaking in the, they they were not doing a traditional Jewish Passover as it developed over the centuries. They were just saying during the Passover season when the Jewish community celebrates Passover, we will celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. So it it wouldn't be uh, tied to a fixed date every year, but just like Thanksgiving is the last Thursday of of um, November, and the date can vary, Christmas is December 25th. That's a fixed date. So there was a debate in the church and a debate between East and West. 
One group said we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus within the Passover season. And the other said we'll do it separately on our own calendar. We'll be right back. I'm Paul Burnett, a board-certified doctor of holistic health. Over the years, I have helped countless people increase and maintain their natural energy production with Alfred Libby's Slow Dissolve Super B12, sold only by Trivita. I have never met anyone deficient in caffeine or sugar, but I have met many people deficient in energy-supporting vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is one of the eight B vitamins, and it is an essential nutrient, meaning the body cannot make B12 on its own. You see, unlike other oral B12 supplements, Alfred Libby's Slow Dissolve Super B12 is fast acting because the formula is scientifically developed to dissolve under the tongue, bypassing the digestive process, making it immediately available for use in the body. Alfred Livy's Slow Dissolve Super B12 is also formulated with other natural energy supporting ingredients such as folate, ginseng root, and other natural ingredients. Not only are the ingredients beneficial for energy, but they also support healthy cognition, mood, nerve function, and natural hemoglobin production. You deserve to live with greater energy and mental clarity. And now, like millions of others, you can with Alfred Livy's Slow Dissolve Super B12, sold only by your wellness partner, Trivita. To order Alfred Libby's B12 for yourself, call 1-800-771-5584 or online at Trivita.com. Order today and use promo code BROWN25 to receive 25% off your order. As a new customer, 100% of your order proceeds from your first order will go to support the Line of Fire radio broadcast. Call 1-800-771-5584. 1-800-771-5584 or online at trivita.com. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on the Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. That is the number, 866-348-7884. I'm going to return in a moment to the moral state of America Uh, But speaking with Charlie uh, on Long Island, uh, D.C. Archbishop Cardinal Wilton Gregory, so Roman Catholic, said that President Biden is a cafeteria Catholic. And he criticized him for picking and choosing parts of the faith while, quote, ignoring or even contradicting other aspects of his adherence. I would say he's very sincere about his faith, but like a number of Catholics, he picks and chooses dimensions of the faith to highlight while ignoring even contradicting other parts. There's a phrase that we use in the past, a cafeteria Catholic, you choose which is attractive and dismiss that which is challenging. I'd say it's a very gracious, that is a very gracious comment uh, given the the ugliness of his pro-abortion views, President Biden's pro-abortion views. And let me say this, and I'm going to go back to the quarter decimal controversy. So it has to do with the, the dating of, of Passover slash Easter. When I said that Jesus is the answer, not President Trump. Yes, President Trump rightly, rightly said that President Biden's actions were blasphemous. But President Trump is selling God bless the USA Bibles for like fifty nine ninety nine, talking about the Bible being his favorite book and the importance of it. I don't buy that for a minute. That to me is an abuse. That to me is using Christians and using Christian money and using the Bible to make money, just to be totally candid. So you may strongly prefer President Biden's policies to those of President Trump, fine. Excuse me, President Trump to President Biden, fine. Just don't put your hope in him to transform America. Put your hope in Jesus and the church rising up, just being straight with everyone here. Okay, so what happened was in the early church over the centuries, you had a division. Do we look to the Jewish community to see when they're calculating dates because it's a lunar calendar based on the moon, et cetera, and when the Passover should be celebrated? Whenever they say it's time, then within those days, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's what I believe Christians should have still been doing. And, and there are certain pockets of the church that do that, that certain parts of the church still do that, and that to me is the right time to do it. 
So you're you're not trying to celebrate the Passover like the Jewish community does, but during the Passover season, which is when Jesus died and rose, that's when you celebrate his death and resurrection. And fine, do it on a Friday and a Sunday. That's when you celebrate it. Great. But other part of the church said, no, we're going to have a fixed time on our calendar on a Friday and a Sunday, and that's when we're going to celebrate it. So that's where the division came. It really becomes codified with Constantine, with the Nicene Council. And Constantine, I'm going to read his exact words, Emperor Constantine. It was declared to be particularly unworthy for this, the holiest of all festivals, to follow the custom and in the calculation of the Jews, who had soiled their hands with the most fearful of crimes and whose minds were blinded in rejecting their custom, we may transmit to our descendants the legitimate mode of celebrating Easter, which we have observed from the time of the Savior's passion to the present day, meaning according to the day of the week. We ought not, therefore, to have anything in common with the Jews, for the Savior has shown us another way, the Jewish Savior, I may add. Our worship follows a more legitimate, more convenient course, the order of the days of the week, and consequently, in unanimously adopting this mode, we desire, dearest brethren, to separate ourselves from the detestable company of the Jews. For it is truly shameful for us to hear them boast that without their direction we could not keep the feast. It would still be your duty not to tarnish your soul by communication with such wicked people, speaking of the Jews. So that was the point that the the real separation, the codification of that is dated back to Constantine's anti-Semitism. That's the point. So yes, I'm very happy to join in with Christians celebrating Good Friday and Easter Sunday, separate from the Passover, but idea because we're still celebrating that Jesus died and rose. And I want to put all attention on that. However, however, ideally, if if God worked miraculously through the church Worldwide, we would be celebrating his death and resurrection within the Passover season itself. That would be the time to do it, and thereby remembering the Jewish roots of the faith. So I want to say this again, and then I'm going to go back to the phones. We are in moral freefall, and the only thing that's going to stop that is sweeping revival in the church, leading to awakening in society. Outpouring in the church leading to awakening in society. Revival in the church leading to gospel-based moral and cultural revolution. That's the only thing that's going to stop the free fall. Politics alone can't do it. Look, Roe v. Wade overturned massive, very, very important ruling. But there has been such a strong pro-abortion push since then that it, it, it could ultimately undo things and make them even worse. So we have to keep changing hearts and changing minds and changing hearts and changing minds and reaching out and helping people with compassion and shouting to the world what the detransitioners are saying at a time like this and saying, they're saying, don't make the same mistakes that we made. All right, uh, to the phones, let's go to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Michelle, welcome to the line of fire. Well, hi, Dr. Brown. Thank you so much for taking my call. I do want to share very briefly that I've read two of your books via audiobook, and they were amazing, Playing with Holy Fire and um, why so many Christians have left the church, and I'm in the middle of the authentic fire. So I share that just to say I'm familiar with your work, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, I wasn't really familiar with this issue until you brought it up today about President Biden, but a brief Google search, I saw that it was just by happenstance because traditionally, I guess, this Transgender Day is on the 31st of March, every 31st of March, and we know that Easter isn't always the 31st of March. It just happened to coincide by chance this year. And I'm wondering, and I might have missed it if you acknowledged that in your, in, in what you were saying. I might have missed it. I didn't hear your whole presentation yeah. up till now. But I wanted to bring up that issue, yeah, yeah. that little detail. It, it just seemed like uh, I wanted to make mention that that was evidently um, – that's something that to consider in this light of this whole thing, but I can agree with you more how horrific yeah. uh, it is to um, be smirched that particular day with that right. particular issue. I mean, it seems like they could have just held off on that for one year. Ah, <laughs> but, okay. So, anyway, so here's the I, thing. Yeah. Thank, thank you. And thanks for the good word yes, about sir. the books. I, I so appreciate that. So number one, yes, I, I mentioned in passing that it, 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 was, it was previously proclaimed. I just mentioned that in passing. I, I, I could have been more clear about that. I did say it happens to fall on Easter Sunday, this day of the year. So I, it was just kind of implicit. The issue is, the issue is, 
hardly anybody would have noticed it if not for the fact that President Biden on Good Friday makes the announcement and, right. and says it's this Sunday. So that's what got everybody. It's, it's, it's yeah, bad enough perfect. that it exists. It's like, OK, well, June is gay pride. And, and then from what I read, the, the trans individual who started pushing for this, if this is correct, wanted it to be separated from this pride event and wanted it to be separated from this time. So because, you know, you got to space out the, through the whole year. So it's it's got to be almost every every month something about gay, lesbian, bi, trans, etc. But so they want to kind of have his own space. But that's the issue. The, this was not uh, President Biden, n no matter how diminished his mental capacities may be, he certainly knew Friday was Good Friday and Sunday was Easter Sunday. He certainly knew that. And right. the White House certainly knew it. So that's what's got everybody so upset. How dare you make the proclamation on that day and, draw, and, and say this is what's going to be happening this Sunday. That's the right. grievous thing. That's the mockery. That's why I said it's like a kick below the, the belt with a laugh and a smile, you know, in your face kind of thing. So we, we pray for yeah. those who struggle. We know they're genuine, deep struggles that most of us can't imagine. We know many young people so massively confused by social media bombardment and all kinds of nonsense. And you just want to be a, a YouTube influencer or a TikTok influencer, put up your own transitioning story. You become a somebody and jazz this, this, this poor guy. Yeah, young guy that now becomes a reality TV star with a, you know, enthusiastic support, especially of his mother. And he's going to transition over TV and, and he becomes the most influential teen in America at a certain point. So kids are bombarded. My heart goes out to them. But yes, that was right. that was the outrage, the intentional timing and setting of it. And, and that. But the, the good news is talking to one of my staff colleagues today, the good news is it's a reminder of the, the dichotomy here. It's a reminder of, of the difference between light and darkness. Nothing is hidden. Hey, Michelle, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir. All right. God bless you. God bless. Hey, uh, there are more calls. I'm so sorry that, well, I'll tell you what, let me try to get to one more really quickly. Let's go to Greg in Ridgeville, Indiana. Time is short, but go for it, sir. Yeah, Dr. Brown. Um, I just wanted to share something with you. I Three weeks ago, we started a, a study in Revelations, and I got down to the verse where he talks about how he's a, a prince of kings. And it, the Holy, you know, the scriptures led me to how he will move leaders, kings and leaders, in whatever direction the um, river goes. And it led me to Romans 1, where he talks about how. At a certain point, he will just turn people over to reprobate mind and, you know, basically turn them over their own lust. You know, our, our country is headed in a direction of a moral decay and, you know, about their own lust. And it seems to me that's kind of where, yeah. uh, where yeah. we're going. God has just turned us over to a reprobate, not us, but turned our country over yeah. to a reprobate mind. It's, it's, hey, Greg, it's, it's a fair observation. It's God saying, hey, you want to go in this direction? Here's where it's going to lead. And let's time it. Let's time it. Let's time it so that no one could mistake the message. Let's time it so it's as clear as could be that there is a contrast. Which direction are you going? Oh, there are political issues, and this may influence how you vote. Certainly you cannot vote for someone doing what President Biden did. But more importantly, it's time for the church to awaken. Time for us to awaken. Time for us to rise and shine. You can't